and uh, go ahead. I am recording, so you can go ahead and start. Thank you. Okay, well, thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Cordell McGarry, and as Jacqueline uh, indicated, I do work with the Department of Procurement Services, and you are now at the DPS workshop on uh, how to get certified in the DBE and ACDB programs or the ABCs of DBE and ACDB certification. So our agenda today is going to cover the following aspects of the programs. Uh, we'll cover the program requirements. We'll talk about the process for certification. Cordell, yes. we're not hearing you. <laughs> Can you go ahead and start back over? Make sure your volume is up. Hello. I was trying to speak. Yes, I came back to to increase the value, which I did. Um, but that's really it. Okay. Yes, here you are. Yes, you're on. You're on. Go ahead and speak. Okay. Okay. So again, good afternoon, everybody. Hopefully, uh, you can hear me now. My name is Cordell McGarry, and I work at the Department of Procurement Services, and I'm, uh, it's my pleasure to talk today about the AC, DBE, and DBE certification program for the city of Chicago. So today on our workshop agenda, we're going to talk about the program requirements, the process for certification. We'll also talk about the application and, and benefits of becoming certified with the city of Chicago and a little bit about what happens once you're certified. So to begin, the certification unit is part of the Department of Procurement Services. And overall, our mission statement for the entire department is, is to basically uh, proclaim and to become the contract of authority for the procurement of all goods and services for all departments of the city of Chicago. Uh, as a group, we work together to ensure a fair, open, and timely process. And we do that by the establishment and communication of superior business practice. Uh, with the guise of integrity, public trust, and laws becoming our, our guiding principles. And with that, is why we have programs like the Minority and Disadvantaged Business Enterprise Programs. So, the DBE and ACDB program basically is a, a, a program that's, that's governed by the uh, United States Department of Transportation and Federal Aviation itself. Uh, we're a federal grant recipient of, of the Department of Transportation. I hear you yes. speaking, but I can't hear. So we're still having trouble hearing. Okay, so can you hear me now? Good afternoon. Can anyone hear me? Okay, so I'm, I'm presuming that you can. I'm hoping that you can. I'm, according to my screen, I, I am uh, on live right at this particular point. So, to begin again, the city of Chicago is a federal grant recipient of funds from the United States Department of Transportation. Uh, those funds are used for purposes of transportation projects involving transit, highway, uh, airport uh, assistance programs. Uh, as, a, as a federal grant recipient, we're required to have a program to enable small businesses to participate in contract opportunities in these areas. So the objectives of the uh, DBA and ACDB program are to ensure that there's no discrimination in the awarding and the administration of contracts 
filed in DOT, Department of Transportation, Federal Highway Authority, Federal Transit Authority, or Federal Aviation uh, Authority assistant contracts involving highway transit and, and airport concession programs. We aim to create a level playing field on which eligible businesses can compete fairly for those opportunities. And the program itself is to also provide guidance for participation of those eligible firms in those contract opportunities. The basic components of certification involve ownership by socially and economically disadvantaged individuals, expertise in that area of service or specialization, and small business size. So a, a, a for profit small business, which is at least 51% owned by one or more socially and economically disadvantaged individuals, would be with the beginning part of ownership. That ownership should also compose individuals who have expertise in the area of specialization that's being performed by the business. And that's management and operations are controlled by those, those owners. Um, regard to small business size, you have to meet the criteria for that uh, pertaining to small business administration guidelines, which we'll touch on in a moment. Uh, in the area of airport concessions, uh, the, the definition of airport concessions not only consists of businesses that are operating at the airport, but also businesses that provide services in the form of management consultation, uh, supplying goods, services, and advertising services to those concessions that are operating at the airport itself. In the area of social um, disadvantage, we look at groups eligibility to be consisting of groups that are defined by the federal regulations as uh, being Black Americans, Hispanic Americans, Native Americans, subcontinent Asian Americans, Asian Pacific Americans, and women. Now, on an individual basis, individuals who don't fall into those categories can, on a case-by-case -case basis, uh, petition to uh, participation in the program on the basis of social and economic disadvantage. And the regulations are set up to actually go into that. So, in the area of, of economic disadvantage, those individuals that uh, that are also qualified should also have a, a personal net worth uh, less than 1.32 million. After certain adjustments to exclude the value of your personal residence, for example, and your ownership interest in your business. Uh, if your personal net worth exceeds that, then you're not considered to be economically disadvantaged. With respect to size standards, the again, the program is designed for small businesses, and the concept of small business is actually defined by uh, several, several matters. Uh, the Small Business Administration publishes a, a guide called Small Business Science Standards, which is actually um, defined small businesses by industry categorization. So let's say, for example, if I'm in the construction industry as an electrician or a plumber, there's a size standard for that particular activity. Uh, and this is published by the SBA. Uh, it's currently available on their, on their website. So we look at, in terms of determining whether or not a business is, is small, we look at three-year, currently look at a three-year average of the firm's annual gross receipts, not exceeding the size standard that's set for uh, in the SBA guidelines. Uh, so again, let's say, for example, uh, if I was to be certified as an electrician, the SBA size standard for electricians would be maybe 16.5 million over a uh, three-year period. So if my, long as my personal, long as my gross sales uh, doesn't exceed that amount averaged over three years, I consider it to be a small business first participation in this program. Um, there are some size standards that, it, that are high, quite high, depending on the industry or that one's working in. Uh, the, the DBE program sets aside a maximum uh, level of 26.29 million for firms that are in, let's say, certain areas uh, where the growth, the SBA size standard might be considered higher. Uh, with respect to certain contracts involving uh, airport construction, that number may be higher. It may actually equal the SBA size standard for that particular uh, type of business. Like, for example, uh, businesses that may be involved in road construction, I believe the SBA size standard is at this period of time 39.5 million, which exceeds the maximum of 26.2 million for the DE program itself. But if a firm is involved in road building at the airport, they're allowed to work at that higher level. So with regard to the uh, ACDB program, it's a little simpler. It's, it's a, it's a three-year average of a, of, a, of a number that's just, just fixed. That's 56.42 million uh, for 
firms that are involved as an airport concession, that generally takes into account in many, many ways the investments that some concessions may have to make to go out to the airport. With respect to certain businesses that are operating at the airport, those members, uh, there are certain exceptions, like, for example, if you're involved in car in the car rental business, your size standard is a little higher. It's a 75.2 feet vertical. If you're a, a bank that's operating at the airport, you consider that as an ACD, you're allowed to participate as long as your assets don't exceed $1 billion. If there are any payphone companies still around, they have less than 1,500 employees, they would also be eligible for certification as an ACD as well as automobile dealers that may be operating at the airport with employees uh, under 350. So the certification process basically requires the uh, uh, filling out an application, which you can actually do online uh, at our website. It's www.chicago.mwdbe.com. This is an online portal for uh, actually completing all of our certification applications. Uh, we have several programs, and they're all uh, available. You can, all, you can apply for any of them in this particular website. So that's, that's where it all, it all starts here. The process is online. You're completing the application online as you go. And during the course of the application, uh, completing the application, you will be asked to attach copies of supporting documentation uh, that would be uh, required for the certification process and uh, any other individual information that you may want to add uh, along with your application. I would recommend that you do this in PDF format. Uh, as it makes it easier to access and read. Uh, you can use JPEG, but JPEG may be somewhat limiting in terms of the review process, and it may also involve uh, a little bit more work as you have to take an individual snapshot of each individual page, and that could be cumbersome. The uh, process also involves an on-site interview, which, of course, during the, the time of the, of the pandemic, we're doing more probably virtual interviews uh, online through Zoom or uh, through formats like this. Um, we, will, we will interview the owners to talk about the uh, owner, their ownership, to talk about the business itself. It's part of the process. So, getting started, there's certain documents that you're going to need as you, you know, in the process of filling out the, the DD application. We're going to touch on some of those now. Uh, the first one is evidence of citizenship or legal residency. Uh, United States, we uh, that could be evidenced by a passport, most commonly a driver's license, things of that nature, green card or or, or, or the like. Um, individual owners are asked to provide in, information regarding their investment in the business or proof of contribution. And trust me, when I say everyone that starts a business, even if you just started today, you have made a contribution of some sort. It could be the cost of the paper that you need to write your business plan. It could very well be the cost of, of legally organizing in the state of Illinois as a corporation, LLC, or a partnership. Or it may even involve costs associated with maybe uh, business costs, such as legal costs, things of that nature. That makes up your contribution to start the business, and it should be documented. So do look for copies of receipts and evidence of that contribution on the part of the owners. Other types of business documents that we also require to be specific to the type of business uh, that you're involved in. Uh, the following examples will talk about forms of business structure that um, we require different types of documents. Um, the first, the first example consists of the uh, sole proprietor or the individual that's operating uh, the business. So again, using myself as an example. Uh, if I decided to operate, I'm an electrician this app, I decided to start a business, and it's just myself, uh, Cordell McGarry, I could you know, pretty much use my, my driver's license or my identification to document the fact that I'm an operator and owner of this business. If I operate under a name other than myself, such as, let's say, Cordell McGarry doing business as Fast Electricity like Company, I would need uh, the SUM name certificate which you can get from the county that pretty much identifies where the Elvin Gary is operating under the name of the company. Uh, other forms of organization will also include the partnership. Uh, that's normally evidenced by a documented partnership agreement between the individuals that's involved in the event that they do business under the same name, and then that assumed name certificate would be needed. Uh, other forms of organization would be LLC or liability company. 
uh, typically this type of uh, this type of business uh, is documented by, uh, let's say, an operating agreement, which idea identifies the business itself, uh, how it's what, what it's about, its course of business, how it's to operate, and, and the managers of the business. That's really done in the form of a again an operating agreement. The corporations, as well as the evidence by articles of incorporation and bylaws, which again governs the the operations of the, of the corporation, identify its officers and how it's to transact business. Other documents that we could also agree for the uh, DVE rates in the application would consist of compensation of the owners. Uh, this compensation would take probably take the form of a W-2 or 1099 form uh, in over a three-year period. And what we look for is compensation for all from all sources. So let's say, for example, uh, myself, I started my business a month ago. Uh, I don't have uh, three years of W-2s or 1099 forms for my business. I probably haven't even done operations to pay out any, any kind of compensation. Uh, but if I work elsewhere or if I receive compensation from other forms and other uh, entities, I would report that information. Same thing with respect to uh, tax returns for the business itself. I uh, indicated earlier that the size standards for businesses include or consist of basically a review of the gross sales of a company over a uh, specified period of time. Um, that's documented by providing three years of signed U.S. federal income tax returns where we can get information such as gross sales and other information that we use to uh, verify the size of the business. Um, we would need that. Again, in the event that a business is brand new and it's just started, it doesn't have the information. That won't prevent you from applying. We just ask that you uh, identify yourself as not having the information because you're brand. Uh, financial statements from the business would also be required, as well as the three years of uh, individual tax returns of the individual owners, uh, again, including all the tax returns and schedules. And all this information can be uploaded as part of the application process on our online portal. So, again, in the, during the process I indicated earlier, that uh, site visit would be conducted. This is required by federal regulations. Um, in the past, before COVID, uh, we would pay a visit to the owner at their place of business. Uh, we would do an interview. Sometimes we might take pictures, but the purpose of the on-site interview is to go one-on-one -on -one with the ownership to basically talk to them about the business. Uh, hopefully, they'll be able to clarify any questions we might have during the course of the review. Uh, we're more interested in understanding what you do, how you do it, and we encourage you to tell the story. Uh, hopefully you've, you've, you've given us information through the application process. You've done that, your on-site review also helps us to kind of round that out. Um, more often than not, we're going to notify you because we want you to be there. Um, on occasions, we have conducted interviews uh, without notification, but that's probably the exception rather than that. So, after submitting the information, having gone over the uh, site visit and review of documentation, we then look towards uh, making a decision of eligibility. And that focuses on the following aspects the ownership, uh, disadvantage status, business side determination, personal network of the owners, areas of independence, and control. All these those areas refer to uh, ownership and control. Again, so ownership has to be at, at, at a minimum. 51% held by um, eligible individuals. Uh, they, and those individuals should also have an understanding and, and technical expertise in the uh, product or service that's offered by the business itself. Um, they should, to, in order that they can control the activities without being dependent upon someone else. Uh, we have been, of course, looking at the social and economic disadvantage uh, status of the individual, which takes into account. Again, the qualifications of being a member of a presumptive class and also having personal network that, that uh, does not exceed the threshold of 1.32 million. We also will focus on the business size to ensure the business falls into the category that pertains to it from an industry perspective and also from the perspective of the, the BBB program itself. So, in considering those things, we focus on ownership. Uh, particularly in the areas of independence and control, because it's important that the owners are actively involved in the management of the business 
and not deterred, not dependent upon someone for financial resources or expertise needed to manage and operate the business itself. It is, it is not just enough to be able to say, I pay the bills, for example, or I take care of the paperwork, or I just do marketing. Uh, and let's say I have a construction business. It's important that our individual has a construction background. Um, the burden of proof is, is, on, is on the applicant. And to that end, again, you're going to help us by providing the information as part of the application, but also, again, as, as I said earlier, telling the story about the business. That is so important. Um, you know the business better than the person that's reviewing you for, for eligibility and conveying that to the reviewer is, is an important part of determining whether or not the business is eligible for certification. So once you're certified, you know, basically the certification has to be maintained. While there's no expiration of certification as a DBE or ACDE, and what I mean by that is that the certification, once you're certified, it does not expire. It continues on as long as you remain eligible. And part of the process for maintaining that eligibility involves the submission of an annual affidavit, we refer to it as the no change affidavit that's submitted from the company attesting that there's been no changes in scenarios like ownership, business size, or personal net worth, for example, that would impact the firm's eligibility for certification. We do recognize that from time to time there are changes that may occur in the business that might involve, let's say, uh, in the areas of ownership, in business size, or personal net worth. Uh, those changes should be communicated to the city within 30 days of the occurrence. Uh, that's required by regulations. And also, the annual uh, no change affidavit and information regarding any material changes can also be reported online at, at our website, uh, www.chicago.mwdbe.com that you would use for uh, regular applications. So the benefits of being certified, again, there's no application. Uh, most programs have an administrative fee for processing. Uh, the federal programs at, at present do not involve an application fee, so there's no cost for making the effort uh, to apply. And that should not, that, that should not, the barrier should not be there. You're encouraged to apply. Um, once you're certified uh, as a DBE and or ACD, you're actually given opportunities to participate in, in uh, USDOT federally funded contracts with other agencies that are also uh, receiving federal dollars, such as Illinois Department of Transportation, for example, Chicago Transit Authority, Metro and Pace. All, all the agencies I just mentioned receive federal dollars from the Department of Transportation, and they also have DBE programs itself. Um, we have a relationship with a number of other agencies that can provide assistance to uh, DBE firms. We refer to them as assist agencies and they're listed on our website. Uh, they provide a variety of services to small businesses and uh, consist of groups like uh, local chambers of commerce, small business development centers, procurement technical assistance centers uh, throughout the, the, the region, Chicago area. These agencies can provide assistance to you in a number of different ways, and they're, they're, they're there to serve you. Um, for the city of Chicago, the program demonstrates our continued commitment to, to the success of minority and women owned businesses by opening up the doors and trying to foster participation in, in, our, in our program itself. The certification process only averages between 90 days for the review to decision. And when I say for review to decision, I'm referring to the point where we have a completed uh, application of all supporting documents in place. Uh, with that being said, we can then do our review and actually <clears throat> reach a decision. Now, during that process, uh, just to kind of see it all as an aside, um, we will review applications and supporting information for completeness and, and fairness to make sure we understand what's being asked uh, and that the individuals are eligible for the uh, request for certification. During that process, if you have a question or need additional information to kind of help us reach that, that conclusion, we'll reach out to you. We normally will do that electronically through the application portal that you use to apply for certification. And we will pretty much outline the things that we need from you. Uh, and you're given the time frames in which to reply. Uh, normally those time frames were average 30 days from the from the point that the question was raised. Um, and then that allows us to complete the process. In the event that we do not receive the information within the 
prior time frame um, that may result in your application being closed for non-responsiveness or uh, just close we could get each a decision. So just keep in mind that we talk about the sooner the 90 day certification process, we're also taking into account that there may be extensions on that based upon our need for additional information and the time that it might take for to receive the response. But overall, we're talking about a 90 day process for our certification. So again, one of the benefits of being certified, I mentioned earlier, uh, involved a certification of participation with other agencies that have DVD programs together, the Illinois Department of Transportation, Metro, Pace, and Chicago Transit Authority, along with the city, uh, we comprise a group called the Unified Certification Program for the state of Illinois. So once you're certified as a DVD or ACDD with any of those organizations, you're certified with all of them. So there's no need to become certified with IDOT in order to participate on the IDOT contract. There's no need to be certified with the Chicago Transit Authority in order to participate on the Chicago Transit Authority contract if you're certified with the city of Chicago and vice versa with them. That's a great benefit. Uh, at the beginning of our presentation, um, Jacqueline talked about certain features that we provide through our, our website, DPS. Like, for example, she talked about the bonding guide. Uh, we have a feature called uh, DPS Alerts. The Department of Aviation on their website, they have a feature called DOA alerts. And you can sign up for either or both of those alert systems to receive information on a weekly basis regarding all contracting opportunities that are offered with the city of Chicago or the Department of Aviation. That's a great resource for us. So you don't miss out on those opportunities. You'll receive that information. Correct. Uh, the city of Chicago and its sister agencies. Sister agencies bring in addition to Chicago Transit Authority, could be the Board of Education, could be the Metropolitan Water Reclamation District. All of those contracting opportunities can be found online. And all of those agencies they have their own procurement programs. And in many cases, the certifications uh, with DVE and our other programs can also afford you opportunities with those uh, with those agencies. So I encourage you to, to go to their websites and look at their contracting opportunities. Uh, and if they are involved in this particular case, DVE certification, no doubt that could be your certification could also benefit you in that way. Um, and so again, the information about assist agencies, we do provide that information to you that's done on our website, uh, DPS website. So I encourage you to go to their website and get to the list of those agencies. Uh, there are a wealth of resources that are available to help. So, I know I've talked about a lot in a, in, a, in a very small period of time. I'm hoping that I didn't confuse you, and I hope that our technical issues didn't also come, confuse you as well. But if there are any questions, I'll be more than happy to take them. Um, and, I, and that being said, I also want to thank you for allowing me the opportunity to, to, to be with you this afternoon. Thank you so much. Jacqueline? Okay. I'm not hearing any response, so I'm Presuming that there aren't any questions, uh, but again, if there are any questions, then you can always feel free to reach out to me. Uh, again, my name is Cordell McGarry, and my direct number here at the city is 312-744-7666. Uh, we're here Monday through Friday. Our hours of operation are generally 8.30 to 4.30. And we'll in some cases, uh, reach out to give us a call. Uh, our general line, our general number is 312-744-4900. And that number will put you in touch with any of uh, several certification representatives and offices that are also available to, to help you as well. So again, thank you for participation.